Hey guys, welcome to another home lab video here today. In today's video, we'll be showing you how you can make a Proxmox backup server um, and get it all set up so that you can essentially back up all your VMs or containers um, and have it you know, easily accessible so that you can recover if you need to. Um, probably in most cases, and in many of you guys' home lab like mine, um, you have usually probably single points of failure and if it dies, it kind of dies, which um, I've definitely done for quite a long time. Uh, but uh, switching from VMware to Proxmox, it does a pretty cool, cool thing with um, you know its backups and snapshots that you can actually do like even firewall level recovery and things like that that I you know enjoy a ton and will hopefully not need to utilize. But um, if I do need to utilize, it will be there. So um, this video is going to be a lot of fun to kind of show you how you can get that set up and get started with it. So let's get started. All right. So you have your Proxmox instance and you probably got, you know, VMs and whatnot. Um, this is actually my second uh, minis form that I just created. So I, I already have it set up on my main one, um, but I'm going to add this, this one to my cluster later um, and create one. But I wanted to create a video for it because it'll, it makes a lot more sense when it's like, you know, you kind of have a few things to show at, at the same time. Um, so the first thing that we'll want to do is actually download the ISO for the Proxmox backup. So Proxmox backup server, which you can actually download off of their site. They also do have a mail one too, but it's more like a um, mail proxy as opposed to actual uh, like mail mail. It's a mail gateway. So that might be something interesting that I might test out later. Um, but what we want to do is download the Proxmox backup server. Um, so we can right click, copy link address here. We can uh, download from URL, we'll download a query and download. Um, it's only like 1.14 gig, so it's actually not, not too bad. So this shouldn't take too long here. It'll just take a few seconds. Actually, 30 seconds based off of what the countdown looks like. Um, and then we can build it from the ISO. So the installation for Proxmox backup server is very similar to like if you install Proxmox um, because it kind of makes sense how they would do it. So we'll create a new VM. We'll name it Proxmox backup server um, or some people abbreviate it for PBS. Um, but we'll just name it like this because I'm going to scrap it anyways later. We'll select the ISO for it. Uh, we can leave everything as default. Um, we're we're going to leave the disk as default as well, 32 gigs, but because we'll be doing an NFS mount for where the data will actually be stored. Um, sockets, let's just do like four here, just give it a decent amount of power. We'll do also like four gigs. The network will be the, the base network and we can start it after it creates. So we can see here, it'll create everything um, and then it essentially gives you the, we'll do the graphical interface here. So it'll, it'll be similar to what we have done um, previously. I was gonna say if I can hide this and, and make this bigger. Um, I think I can make it bigger um, by popping it out. Yeah, we'll, we'll do the pop out to make it a little bit bigger so you guys can see. So we'll agree to their um, options. Uh, we only have that one disk, so we're just going to install it there. United States, we're going to select Chicago because I'm in central time zone. We'll type in our password. We'll type in an email. And we'll hit next. So you you have the domain. Um, so actually, this will be uh, PBS2, essentially. Um, but that, that won't matter as much right now, um, because I'm going to just delete it. Um, but we'll do 117, we'll do 117 because I think that should be free. Um, and then we'll hit install, let that install. So this will take a, a, probably about a, about a minute. It doesn't actually take too long, um, because it's blazing fast with the, the, uh, minis form with a, uh, 7300 megabytes per second um, NVMe. So everything just kind of goes really quick, which I love at this point. Um, I don't know if I'm ever going to go be able to go back and use like Windows servers that are running like, you know, even on just normal SSDs. Um, so 
And here we go. We got already at 99% here. So with this, once this is done installing, we will create um, the NFS mount and everything so that it is ready. But you can see that we can go to that address on 8007. Um, so once this comes back up, we can actually go to that. Um, so this will reboot. Um, so we don't need that, but we can go to HTTPS 1681117807. Um, when it is up, so now it's up, we can accept the cert, we can log in. And kind of very, very similar interface to what you would see in your normal Proxmox. We're going to dock mode it up in here too. So you can see how everything is kind of set up here. There really isn't, you know, a few things. But what we're going to do um, in here is actually add a data store. But we can't, like, just add it with, like, an NFS mount here because it only uh, uh, gives you a path. And this is the path that we would essentially do. So what we'll do here is actually go back to Proxmox. And actually, we'll, we'll, we'll tabby this so that we have a, a better terminal. <laughs> Uh, picture for you guys too. So we'll open Tabby and get an SSH session to it. We add 192.168.1.117. Um, so essentially, what we'll need to do is um, configure FS tab so that it can mount the thing. Um, so we'll just do vi etsy fs tab um, in here and we'll add the entry. So I just have a Synology NAS um, that is running Proxmox Backup Test is what I named this. We'll mount it to mount backup. The protocol will be NFS. We'll do some parameters um, that I found before. So we'll just do auto, no fail, no A time, no lock intra TCP act uh, timeout. Uh, we'll set that to 1800 and then zero zero for the defaults afterwards. Um, so there's a few things to do before we can actually do this. So the first thing is actually to make the directory mount back up. Um, then we will need to actually install um, app install NFS common. Okay, so we, we made sure that th that was actually there um, because if you don't have the NFS uh, file type, you wouldn't be able to mount it. We'll do a daemon reload to make sure the configuration uh, stuck. Um, and then we'll do a mount A. Um, and the volume A pro Proxmox backup. Okay, so possibly my uh, Synology NAS configuration wasn't perfect. I just created it right before this video. Um, so let me double check some settings right here real quick. Um, and then we should, we should be good. Um, storage manager. Uh, okay. Volume eight looks right. Shared photos. Proxmox backup test. Um, oh, it is case sensitive. FS tab. Prox mock, mocks, back up, test, oh, got to reload it again, yep. And we can see that it did get mounted, so now we have it mounted. Um, the other thing that we'll need to do is actually make sure that it is owned by a backup. Mount backup. Okay. It works in CentOS to use the dot. <laughs> um, okay. And then we'll chmod 775 on mount backup as well. Okay. So that should be it for the NFS related things. Um, so we can go back to the GUI here. And now we can add a data store. We'll name it data store. The absolute path is mount backup. 
and you can select like prune options and things like this. Um, this is really kind of up to you what your backup retention policy is, right? So like if you want it so that, um, you know, it sticks around for a very, very long time, great. Hopefully you have the storage for it though, because that's always going to be the hardest part. Um, but if you're like, oh, you know, I only want to keep, you know, certain amounts, you can do that too. So I'll put some numbers in here just for what I have. Um, but you don't have to follow this. This is really on what you want to do with your configuration. Um, 21, we'll do eight weekly, three monthly and one yearly um, option. So from here, you can see it is now creating the data store which this data store will be used um, when you actually configure the stuff. So there's, there's actually kind of like two parts. So once you have everything configured on your Proxmox backup server, you need to hook that up to your Proxmox instance um, so that when you do the backups, it will essentially use this server. Um, so you can see here that we got now that completed. Um, the data store is in there. Um, once we actually do stuff, it'll, you can see contents in here, but nothing will show up right now. So now what you can do here is go back to your data center um, and you have to go to your data center and not, you know, your Proxmox actual instance so that you can see um, storage and backup. And that's how you essentially do it. So the first thing that we need to do is add the storage, which will be the Proxmox backup server. So we'll name it Proxmox backup as the ID, the server will be essentially the IP. So 117, this will be admin at PAM, I think, I believe, um, because we're using PAM authentication. This would be the password and the data store will be data store. Um, the other thing is you will need the fingerprint for the self-signed configuration. So if you go back to your dashboard and your backup server, you can hit show fingerprint and you can copy this fingerprint and paste that in here and then hit add, give it a few seconds. Hopefully I didn't type anything wrong, um, unauthorized. Um, so I might've typed something in wrong. Let me, let me double check the password here real quick. Uh, 117. Oh, it's possible. Um, it's been a little bit since I last set this up. Um, I wonder if you need that port. Port? Okay, <laughs> give me one second. Let me, <laughs> unless I took the password in wrong uh, like three times. Um, let me look at my existing backup server here real quick. <laughs> um, configuration. Um, okay, data center, storage, Proxmox backup. Okay, so it's just the IP, no port needed. Oh, it's not It's not uh, admin, it's root. It threw me off because it said admin in the thing. Okay, there we go, see, admin. So we'll use admin. So now now it shows up as a uh, VZ dump backup file. And then what we can do now is add our backup on how we want to do this. Um, so we'll select the storage and we'll want to put it in Proxmox backup. Um, this is now up to you. So like, for example, if you want it daily, so like, um, let's see, every day at some time. So this is like 10 p.m., 10 p.m. Um, I always have to think when I when I look at times, you can see what uh, machines and things that you would run. So you can set, you can create multiple backup schedules so that, you know, you back up certain things at certain times. But for my home lab, I'll just back up everything at 10 p.m. every night. Um, you can send emails, things like that. Um, node, I really can't remember if I actually set an email here, but I'm gonna, I'm kind of curious now if I hit create. Um, without the keep option, the storage configuration node. Okay, so we'll just, that will be the backup, server backup configuration. Okay, so you don't have to actually put an email, but you could if you wanted to. So you can see how this is now configured um, and it will run, the next run will be tonight at 10 p.m. Um, but you can also hit run now so that it will just run right now. Um, so you can see down here that the job will start running um, 
and you can essentially see what it gets queued up, things like that, as well as on the backup server. Um, you'll start noticing in here, things will start showing up. Um, so you can see in the contents, the blob and everything. Um, once this is actually all done, and I want to show you kind of like how it looks because um, this is actually pretty cool. And you can see how it's, you know, it's right here that the configuration is locked and everything is because it's currently saving. Um, this was essentially just how it will be. So depending on, you know, how big your virtual machines are, things like that, it could take, you know, from a few seconds to a few minutes. I know I've had like Windows VMs and like things that have like gigs of data, um, like, you know, 100 gigs of data. And that definitely took a little bit, but it will do like incremental things too afterwards. So like the first thing will always be the worst. <laughs> um, so, but there's also prune jobs that will prune things, you know, um, afterwards. So let's uh, give it a second here. Um, and once once this is done backing up, um, I'll actually fast forward to show you what it kind of looks like um, on the job. Um, and actually, I think it just finished finished backing up, which was which was pretty cool. Yeah, so it actually finished backing up. So you can see in here that you got your blobs, you got your data, things like that in here, which you can prune, delete, um, or do whatever you want. Um, but the cool thing about this is if you actually hit the VM, hit backup. Um, and maybe I have to refresh it if it's still backing up. Snapshots. I could have swore. Oh. <laughs> that's the other confusing part. Okay, so so if you hit if if you hit the server, then change the storage type from your from local to to uh your proxmox, you'll see your backup. Okay, that's where it is. I was like wondering, I was like, where is it? Uh, and that threw me off again. <laughs> um, so you can see that this was this was backup. So you can see that there's a restore fire restore, and you can like show configuration. So you can restore restore it back from this you know snapshot. Do a live restore. Do unique. Um, if you want it, or you can do like a file level restore, which will open up your files that it showed in here. So I can see in this partition in my root volume, I got all these things, which is what your normal Linux system would look like. Um, so if you had an actual file, like, you know, in a home directory or somewhere else, you could, which I don't, um, but you could download like, you know, your key or something else. So like, for example, let's look at like this bash RC. You can download this bash RC and you can now, now you have a copy of that bash RC in here, um, which is pretty neat. And then you can re-upload it um, to your server as a recovery thing. So there are file uh, level restores, which is super nice, especially when you accidentally delete a file in Linux, because there's really no way to recover from deleting in Linux, unfortunately. Um, that's why the RM command is very, very um, not fun to use if if you're if you're deleting stuff and you accidentally delete the wrong thing. So, but that's pretty much it for this video. So that's how you can set up a Proxmox backup. That's how you can do some uh, file level restores. And now you kind of your home lab can be just ever so slightly more uh, redundant in case something happens or uh, you have a bad configuration. So. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.